what is going to be the future of learning. I do have a plan. In the, in the boundary wall of the slum next to my office, I stuck a computer inside it just to see what would happen if I gave a computer to children who never would have one, didn't know any English, didn't know what the internet was. The children came running in, it was three feet off the ground, and they said, what is this? And I said, yeah, but it's, uh, you know, I don't know. So <laughs> they said, um, why have you put it there? I said, just like that. And they said, can we touch it? I said, if you wish to. And I went away. About eight hours later, we found them browsing and teaching each other how to browse. So I said, but that's impossible. Because, you know, how, how is it possible? They, they don't know anything. My colleagues said, no, it's a simple solution. One of your students must have been passing by, showed them how to use the mouse. So I said, yeah, that's possible. So I repeated the experiment. I went 300 miles out of Delhi into a really remote village where the chances of a, you know, a passing software development engineer <laughs> were, was, was, was very little. <laughs> I repeated the experiment there. There was no place to stay, so I stuck my computer in, I went away, came back after a couple of months, found kids playing games on it. When they saw me, they said, we want a faster processor and a better mouse. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I said, how on earth do you know all this? And they said something very interesting to me. In an irritated voice, they said, you've given us a machine that works only in English, so we had to teach ourselves English in order to use it. <laughs> so, I, that's the first time as a teacher that I heard the word teach ourselves said so casually. Here's a, here's a short glimpse from those years. That's the first day at the hole in the wall. On your right is an eight-year-old. Um, to his left is his uh, student. Um, uh, she is six. And uh, he's teaching her how to browse. Then on to the... Uh, you know, other parts of the country, I repeated this over and over again, getting exactly the same results everywhere. An eight-year-old telling his elder sister what to do. <laughs> and finally, a girl explaining in Marathi what it is, and said, there's a processor inside. So I started publishing. I published everywhere. I wrote down and measured everything. And I said, in nine months, a group of children left alone with a computer in any language would reach the same standard as an office secretary in the West. I'd seen it happen over and over and over again. But I was curious to know what else would they do if they could do this much. I started experimenting with other subjects. So then people said, well, how far will it go? Where does it stop? I decided I would, I would destroy my own argument by creating an absurd proposition. I made a hypothesis, a ridiculous hypothesis. Tamil is a South Indian language, and I said, can Tamil-speaking children in a South Indian village learn the biotechnology of DNA replication in English from a street-side computer? And I said, I'll measure them, they'll get a zero, I'll spend a couple of months, I'll leave it for a couple of months, I'll go back, they'll get another zero. I'll go back to the lab and say, we need teachers. I found a village, it was called Kali Kuppam in southern India. Uh, I put in hole in the wall computers there, downloaded all kinds of stuff from the internet about DNA replication, most of which I didn't understand. <laughs> I, the children came rushing and said, what's all this? So I said, um, it's very topical, very important. It's all in English. So they said, how can we understand such big English words and you know, diagrams and chemistry? So by now, I had developed a new pedagogical method, so I applied that. I said, I haven't the foggiest idea. <laughs> 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 and anyway, I'm going away. <laughs> so I, I left them for a couple of months. They'd got a zero, I gave them a test. I came back after two months, and the children trooped in and said, we've understood nothing. So I said, well, I mean, what did I expect? So I said, OK, but um, how long did it take you before you decided that you can't understand anything? So they said, we haven't given up. We look at it every single day. So I said, what? You don't understand these screens, and you keep staring at it for two months. What for? So a little girl, who you'll see just now, 
She raised her hand and she says to me in broken Tamil and English, she said, well, apart from the fact that improper replication of the DNA molecule causes disease, we haven't understood anything else. <laughs> so, so, what's learning going to be like? Encouragement seems to be the key. If you look at Kukpam, if you look at all of the experiments that I did, it was simply saying, wow, saluting learning. There is evidence from neuroscience. The reptilian part of our brain, which sits in the center of our brain, when it's threatened, it shuts down everything else. It shuts down the prefrontal cortex, the parts which learn. It shuts all of that down. Punishment and examinations are seen as threats. We take our children, we make them shut their brains down, and then we say, perform. We need to shift that balance back from threat to pleasure. I think what we need to look at is we need to look at learning as the product of educational self-organization. If you allow the educational process to self-organize, then learning emerges. It's not about making learning happen, it's about letting it happen. The teacher sets the, the process in motion, and then she stands back in awe and watches as learning happens. So, what's my wish? My wish is that we design the future of learning. We don't want to be spare parts for a great human computer, do we? So we need to design a future for learning. And I've got to, hang on, I've got to get this wording exactly right, because, you know, it's very important. ...world to tap into their wonder and their ability to work together. Help me build this school. It will be called a school in the cloud. It will be a school where children go on these intellectual adventures driven by the big questions which their mediators put in.